All living things kneel before your master. Hey guys, Mark here from Ace Card Gaming, and welcome back to Bite Sized Metal Madness, the mini series where we attempt to analyze the many depictions of everyone's favorite Hedgehog Terminator, Metal Sonic. So far, we've covered Metal's appearances in CD and Sonic 4 Episode 2, discussing both the good and bad in terms of how he was utilized in those games. But today, I think it's time to tackle Metal's first major 3D outing. No, I'm not talking about Fighters, Sonic R, or even his brief cameo in the adventure games. No, 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 no. Let's talk some Sonic Heroes. Heroes is an odd one in the Sonic series. A strange outcast, no not that one, that lies in a weird limbo between the adventure era and the so-called dark era. I said not that one. And despite being Sonic's first foray onto third-party hardware exclusively, with a brand new formula developed for his brand new audience, the game has received little to no attention from Sega in the way of ports or remasters in the near two decades since it launched. Which is a huge shame, because besides the obvious issues of it being more difficult for people to play legitimately, just take your pick from the many absolutely crucial story elements in the series that are being held hostage in obscurity alongside this game. Omega's debut, Shadow Survival, the formation of Team Dark, and more relevantly to this video, Big's provocative dancing, I mean Neo Metal Sonic. Bit of a side rant, but Sega, get your act together and show this game some love. But before we jump in and give Neo Metal's appearance in Heroes the deep dive treatment, if you're new to the channel, or you just haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing. I make lots of Sonic and gaming analysis videos just like this one, so if this type of content interests you, why not stick around? Your subs really help the channel, and I'll always make it my mission that you enjoy your stay. By the time Sonic Heroes rolled around in 2004, as far as the games were concerned, Metal Sonic had been missing in action for nearly 10 years, his last significant appearance being in Knuckles' Chaotix all the way back in 95. And with Sonic 4 Episode 2 still 8 years away, this was Metal's big opportunity to make his grand return as the primary antagonist. Along with his snazzy new design for this game, Metal has now taken on the title of Neo Metal, and boasts a host of new features and abilities he can use to take out Sonic and conquer the world, including the ability to shapeshift and copy the data of other beings. From the beginning, Metal displays his intelligence and cunning, opting for the cloak and dagger approach against his arch nemesis this time, becoming an ominous presence in the background throughout the game as he pulls the strings from behind the scenes. He came up short against his organic counterpart when he took the direct approach last time, and he isn't about to make that same mistake again. The plot of Heroes sees Metal finally turn on Eggman, using his shape-shifting abilities to pose as him to lure Sonic and his friends into combat so he can scan their data, all while the real Eggman is locked away aboard the Egg Fleet, which you discover at the end of the Chaotix story. Along with copying Sonic's data, Metal's primary goal is to obtain the data of Chaos, the God of Destruction, and plans to achieve this by kidnapping Chocola and Froggy, who both share DNA with Chaos, with Chocola being a Chow, and Froggy swallowing Chaos in Sonic Adventure 1. And while Metal predicted correctly that Sonic and his friends would fall into his trap, he can't believe his luck when the event set in motion by Rouge sees Shadow blunder straight into his crosshairs as well, handing him the data for the ultimate life form. With Eggman out of the way and no longer holding him back, Metal intends to use all of the data he's copied, along with materials from the Egg Fleet to achieve his ultimate form, and rule over a robot kingdom as its overlord after wiping out all organic life on Earth. He actually comes very close to achieving this too, managing to use the data of Chaos, Sonic, and the ultimate life form to transform himself into his Metal Overlord form, but is foiled in the 11th hour by Sonic and his friends when they use the power of the Chaos Emeralds to defeat him. As the game ends, Metal's lifeless body is last seen in the hands of Omega, but ultimately ends up back in the possession of Eggman. Okay, in terms of analysis, there is a lot to sink our teeth into here, but I think I'm gonna start with our Brobot's bombastic new design. I mean, don't get me wrong, it looks totally badass. On a practical level, I just hope for his sake there's no narrow doorways on that Egg Fleet. Not with those six foot long punk rock quills sticking out of his head. Neo Metal loses the sleek, aerodynamic design of his base form, and leans heavily into a more intimidating and aggressive design, with exaggerated proportions and jagged edges as far as the eye can see. He no longer appears to be built for speed, with the purpose of his appearance instead now being to instill fear. Which makes perfect sense, as he intends to become an overlord and rule the world. But where did this design come from exactly? Well, my assumption has always been that Metal chose this look for himself using his new power of shapeshifting for an all-neo look, as he works towards establishing his own identity. This makes sense, as he reverts to his base form at the end of the game when he deactivates and his shapeshifting wears off. Sonic Heroes is our first look at the real Metal Sonic, 
and shows much more of his personality and how he would behave, without being shackled by Eggman's programming. The weird thing about Heroes is that what I always found most interesting about it is the parts of its narrative it doesn't spell out for you. It seems obvious from the story we ended up with that Eggman intended to use Metal again in order to take out Sonic and conquer the world, but something obviously went very wrong. Eggman upgraded Metal with a host of new abilities to defeat Sonic, but fearing this still wouldn't be enough, also removed the restrictions from Metal's AI, his logic for this being that Metal could adapt quicker and ultimately stand a better chance against Sonic. But this relaxation of Metal's programming had unintended side effects, allowing him to have his own ideas about where he fits in the world, and these ideas did not line up with Eggman's. In Metal's eyes, Eggman had tried and failed to destroy Sonic countless times, and only ever misused Metal as a tool, holding him back from his true potential by restricting his programming. With his AI now unshackled, allowing him to see everything with clarity for the first time, Metal decides to usurp Eggman's empire, adopting his plans to conquer the world and rule his own robot kingdom, all while holding Eggman prisoner aboard the Egg Fleet he took from him by force. As for Neo Metal's new abilities, Metal can now shoot arcs of electricity from his hands, and while this makes for some nice spectacle, that's pretty much all it's used for in this game, I don't even think he uses it as an attack. Personally, I'm a much bigger fan of his chest beam. I've seen some people argue the lightning attacks are way better, but I'm sorry. If I want to watch someone with a bad case of static electricity, I'll stick with Star Wars or Mr. Bean. Laser beams have been iconic in the Sonic series from the very beginning, and I'm not even sure you can be considered an elite tier Eggman creation without one. But the ability I find far more interesting is his speech. Up until now, Metal has always been cast as the Silent Menace, a creepy mute with no other goal than to kill you. But now, he has the ability to express himself and outwardly communicate with those around him. There is a lot of debate about whether his speech is tied to his Neo Metal form, or if he had it all along. And while I can't answer that definitively, it always made sense to me that it was as a result of his AI being unlocked by Eggman. If his Neo form is just a shapeshift, then there's nothing physical enabling his speech, so a software solution just adds up. We already discussed Metal's ability to shapeshift, and how he cleverly uses this ability throughout the entire game, posing as Sonic to steal Chocola and Froggy, obtaining the data of Chaos, and appearing as Eggman to lure Sonic and his friends into getting their data copied, which is another new addition to his powers, or at least is the first time we've seen him use it. Metal can now scan the data of organic or robot beings in range, perfectly replicating their skill sets for his own use, and this forms the crux of his entire plan. Metal scans the data of Chaos, Sonic, and Shadow, and uses this data and the Egg Fleet to transform himself into his ultimate form, Metal Overlord. All he had left to do was take out his nemesis, burn the world, and build a robot kingdom in his own image from the ashes. During your final encounter with Metal, his ability to speak makes all of his internal fears and struggles a lot more apparent, as while he outwardly portrays himself as a superior being, on the inside he struggles with feelings of inferiority, and a crisis of identity, referring to himself as the real Sonic, and Sonic as the copy, saying how that now he has achieved perfection, he is no longer afraid of anything. And while the target age group of this game is considerably lower compared to the adventure games, I still found these lines of dialogue really interesting, and actually helps explain how Metal came to hate all organic life. His rivalry with Sonic, and his relationship with Eggman, where he is seen merely as a tool, sees him want to prove that robots are the superior beings, and as overlord of them all, he stands above everything. And while he ultimately falls short against the power of the Chaos Emeralds, Metal is no pushover, and displays some seriously impressive abilities during his last stand, not least of which being the ability to perform Chaos Control. And even if it is just as a result of copying the data of beings who can already use this ability, it's still the first instance I'm aware of of a non-organic being using Chaos Control. Similar to the impressive ability of Mecha to use the Master Emerald to attain a super form in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, which just helps show there's something special about these Sonic copies. They just seem to have something that sets them apart from all of Eggman's other creations. When Eggman gets the remains of Metal back from Omega, he immediately locks down Metal's AI once more, ensuring he can never rebel again, and as if to further punish his treachery, silences him once more by removing his ability to speak explaining why Metal is once again a mute servant in most subsequent games. Metal's depiction in Heroes wasn't bad by any stretch. He got to play the role of the primary antagonist, and for the most part, was used in such a way as to build mystique and demonstrate his brutal logic and intelligence. He pulls the strings from behind the scenes, and manipulates the good guys into doing exactly what he wants, 
even taking advantage of events outside his control to scan the data of the ultimate life form. And, I mean, we got the Metal Overlord theme. What more could we want? But what didn't help was Sonic Team's decision to lock him behind collecting the seven Chaos Emeralds. Sure, everyone knows the tricks and how to easily get them now, but back when this game was new, in my experience, a lot of people didn't bother with this, so completely missed out on the last chapter, with Metal's big reveal and final boss fight. It was even more strange when compared to the last chapters of the two adventure games, that just required the completion of all the standard stories to unlock. It just makes hiding these crucial story elements and the true ending behind what are effectively mini-games seem really odd. And yeah, I know the classic games have been doing this forever, but the 3D games have set a precedent for themselves. I guess my only significant criticism of Metal's depiction in this game is that this story could have been told much better with more serious writing. Maybe on the same level as the adventure games, if not darker. Robots and rogue AIs can make for some seriously creepy storytelling, and there is great potential for some really awesome narratives when the kid gloves are taken off. I would have liked to have seen something along the lines of the Emperor Metallics in Fleetway's Sonic the Comet. Metal's AI infects all of Eggman's systems, turning them all against him, and he creates more robots in his own image, with a hive mind connection to his, to carry out his bidding and lure Sonic into his trap. I'd still be cool with them keeping the posing as Eggman side of things, that still could have worked. I guess I just can't help feeling that there was so much potential to do more with this story, but I think their hands were probably tied with the younger target audience for this game. But what about you guys? What's your take on Neo Metal and his depiction in Heroes? Were you happy with the story as is? Or, like me, would you have preferred a much darker tone? Let me know your thoughts on everything in the comments below. And remember, if you enjoyed the video and found the content interesting, please consider subscribing and throwing a like on the video. I make lots of deep dive analysis videos just like this one on Sonic characters and the series lore. I also do reviews and retrospectives on Sonic games, and from time to time other games too. So if any of this sounds interesting to you and you'd like to show your support, hit that subscribe button. Your subs really help the channel, and each and every one of them is hugely appreciated. You can also follow me on social media if you want to endure more of my Sonic ramblings, or help support the channel further by becoming a channel member or patron. But for now, a big thank you for watching, and as always guys, take care.